my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding photography video, we're going to create a soft edge vignette around this bride here, and then add a couple of roses subtly into the background of that vignette. I'll show you the easy way to do this. I'll show you the problems with that easy way and how you can correct those problems. Okay, starting off with our image, the first thing you want to do is to take your background layer, drag it onto the new layer button, there we go, and make a copy of that. Just hide this one. I always do this on my important work so that I have a protection copy right there. In case something happens and I mess up this image, I can always go back to my original image. So I always do that backup safety. Okay, now the easy way to create a vignette is to create a mask and then just show the area through the middle of the mask. Now the nice thing about that is you can move your image around a little bit to line that up. Now the first thing I want to do here, notice I have my rulers showing. If you don't have rulers shown, you can show those over here under view menu and rulers. And you want to have snap to guides. Make sure that is selected. See right there, snap to guides. I'm now going to create guides at the middle point in here, which is right there. You can actually see that middle point because this image is selected. I'll pull a guide down. It's going to snap. There it goes. Snaps right to the middle horizontal. I'll pull one in from the left-hand side and it will snap right to that center point again. There it goes. So they snap right to the center point of the document and that gives me a guide center point in here. All right, now let's make our mask. Go up to our new layer here. Click on the Add Layer Mask button. There we go. Notice how the mask now is locked. Little link button linked to the image and it's all white. White shows everything. Black hides. So you have a choice of white or black or grays to show or hide. So what I want to do now is I want to create my vignette shape which will be an oval like that on this edge, kind of a soft edge vignette. We'll be doing that on the mask and the way I want to do this, I want to hide the area outside of my ellipse. So let's see how this is done. I'll be using black. There's our black. Make sure that you're on the mask. Make sure that the blue outline is showing on the mask side. Go up to the marquee tools here and choose the elliptical marquee tool. I have the feathering set for 25. That's what is going to give me that soft edge. So feathering set at 25. And then if I bring my cursor, you can see there's the cursor. If I bring it right on top of that center point, there we go, hold the Alt key down and it will then drag that out and draw that from the center. You can see how I'm just drawing that from the center. There you go. So it's kind of, kind of like that, just kind of a nice elliptical shape in there and let go. Now that selects the inner section. What I want is the outer part selected. So let's go up here to select and inverse. And now the outer part is selected. I'm on the mask. I have my black color. I can go to the paint bucket now. Make sure you're on paint. Opacity at 100 all the way up and click in here. It then fills that outer area with black as you can see there. With the black filled this thing comes in and gives us that transparency. We can now deselect that. So there's the basic vignette. Now I'm going to put a new layer in behind this. Let's go down here to the background layer, click on a new layer. There we go. Come down, make sure that your color is white. Go to the paint bucket, fill the new layer with white. Could you use the shortcut key of Alt and Backspace that would also fill this with the foreground color. But paint bucket's easier and you can see what it is that I'm doing. So there we go. We now have that image in here with that nice vignette. Let me show you the reason why you want to do it this way. Let's just unlock those or unlink those. Now click over here on the image side. Make sure you see that blue outline. I can then move the image back and forth and center the image. 
This also shows you a little problem in here with Photoshop Elements and with these masks. If I click off the edge here, you can see there's the edge of that picture. The edge is showing through. So the, even though we have a mask here, it's pure black. We checked that ahead of time. It's pure black, but it's still bleeding through a little bit of the image up in there. There's the problem we have on that. We have a little bit of bleed through on this. Now the way to get around this is to put another image on top, another layer on top. So do a new layer. There we go. New layer button. I'm going to fill this layer with white. We're on white. Paint bucket and fill. Fills that with white. Let's go up to select and reselect our last thing. That's the outer section here. Let's invert that. Select inverse. Now if I hit the delete key it's going to cut out a hole which exactly matches our mask over there. I'll hit the delete key. There we go. An exact match on that. I can then deselect. And this white layer here masks out the edge of that picture. So this gives us the solid background that you want to have when you're doing this. And the reason why I have this in two parts like this is so that I can go back and move the person around. I could have just made a selection here and then copied my image, pasted the image into that selection using paste into, which is up here on the edit menu, paste into selection. The problem with that one is, I mean it works, the problem is though once you move off to something else that is then locked in solid and you can't go back and change it. Down here I can always go back and I can move my image around because these are unlinked. So use the mask and the image. I'm going to show you that. I'll come back here to my image. I can move the image around so I have that flexibility still. I still can come in here and I can adjust the positions of things. So the mask allows me to adjust my position. The soft edge of course we have on both of these that was done with the feathering and this second layer up here this is just the white area out here, so we have a good solid white area. So kind of combining these two techniques gives us a real nice vignette. We can now hide those guidelines. Let's go up here to view and let's un just hide the guides. There we go. So real nice looking vignette. All right, let's now put in something a little more interesting in here. Let's go over to our photo bin. There we are. I have this picture down here. I'll double click on that. Bring this rose up. We'll be using this rose in here. I want to clean the rows out and just have just the rows and nothing else. I don't have in this background stuff. So I'll do this in a couple of steps. But we'll just drag this over first. There we go. On the wrong layer, so I'll just pull that to the top. There's the rows. We can do a rough position at this point. Try to get that where I want it. You can, you can change the size or adjustments if you want to at this point. It's really up to you. I think I'll make this one a little bit larger on this side like that. Choose OK. Now let's get rid of this background. I'll be doing this in just a couple of steps. First I'll do a rough clean out. Grab the lasso tool and I'm just going to come in here and do a quick lasso and stay kind of enclosed. Notice that what I am getting is I'm getting away from most of those shadows. So a little bit in there and come back to the beginning, overlap that. There's my selection. Let's invert that. Select inverse. Hit the delete key and that's our rough selection. That gets rid of those shadow areas. I can now come back to the magic wand and click into this background area with a magic wand and begin to delete with the magic wand for the rest. Now the reason why I got rid of that background bit first is it just saves me a little bit of work because those shadows are at I had to go back and, and reselect you know several times get the rid of those shadows but by doing a rough selection first and then finishing it up with the magic wand it makes it real easy okay and deselect so far so good I missed a little bit up in here as you can see the magic wand was a bit too much so I probably want to you know not go quite as far on that let me just back up I'll do the control Z key let's back up a few steps here. Look, okay, it was in my first selection. You can see right there. There's the problem. So let's zoom in on that first selection. And we can actually see it very clear now. 
that the selection is cutting into this leaf and it's cutting into that bit of leaf there which gives me the effect of cutting into the row. So I want to remove this from my selection and remove that from the selection. I can do that easily here with the lasso tool. Let's go over here to the subtract button and then I'm just going to kind of freehand right along the edge of that leaf like that. That removes that little bit and then let's freehand down around this bit that I don't want in there. That removes that from the selection. While we're here, let's just take a look through and make sure everything else is looking okay. That looks fine. Okay, I can now hit the delete key and delete that out. We'll go back and finish the rest of these so we can just double check. That looks okay. Delete key. Okay, that's too much. The thing I'm going to do in here, I think I'm going to go for a new selection. I'm just going to freehand this. Let's just back up a couple of steps here. Because the soft edge on that is real out of focus, I'm kind of losing a little bit of the magic wand as being a too, you know, too, too strong. Now I could try to change the settings on the magic wand, change the tolerance levels and try to you know, find exactly where the problem is, but this is just faster. There we go. So sometimes, you know, whatever is the fastest way to do things is, is the best way. Maybe not necessarily the trickiest or the cleverest, but really when you're working in production, what you want oftentimes is just the fastest. And sometimes doing a freehand is the fastest way to go. I like the magic wand when it works because it's really very, very easy. And when it works, it is the fastest way to do things. Sometimes, though, you want a little more control. Now, we're going to be fading this out and making it fairly soft. So, you know, we won't need to be really critical on this thing. Okay, so far, so good. Let's just, I think I'm going to cut it right along there, something which the magic wand wouldn't do which is allowing me to modify the shape a little bit just for artistic sensibilities. Delete that. Finish off this last little bit here and up oh, didn't want to do quite that. I'll start right there. And then this will finish off the basic rose layer. We're then going to fade this out a little bit. There we go. All right, let's zoom out, hold the Alt key down. There we go. There's our rows. Let's fade the rows back a bit and you can do that just with the transparency setting here. Just kind of fade that rose out like that. Now notice that we have the roses sitting in here on top of this whole thing. That's because I had that mask in there. If I wanted to get it in behind this vignette, I would lose the whole rose because, of course, that mask. Let me just demonstrate that. If I put it down here, so it'd be in behind the vignette, I don't see it at all because of this bit up here. So there's a little bit of an issue right there. Now, if you wanted to have the rose appearing to be in behind this vignette, what you'll need to do is to create a new selection and cut off a little bit of the rose. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to do this on a new layer, so I'll keep this layer here. Let's copy it to a new layer. That's one version. Let's go up to this layer. I'll go back here. Let's bring our guidelines back in again. Show the guides. Come back to the middle. Same thing. Hold the Alt key down and drag out. Now, you want to be right in the middle of that soft vignette. There we go. Hit the Delete key. That cuts off that bit of that rose right there and deselect. So that gives it the appearance of that rose is in the background. That's perfect. Let's now come back over to this one. My move tool. Bring that over here. Let's have a little bit of an edge showing. And I didn't go quite far enough. There we go. Nope, hit the wrong thing. Undo move. I think just to be on the safe side, I'm going to lock these layers here. Let's lock that layer. And let's lock that layer so I don't accidentally move those things. Just 
make sure they stay put while we're working on our roses up here. All right, on this rose, I have that bit. I can just get rid of that with the eraser tool and just hand erase. And there we go, that's, that's gone, that's cleaned off. Let's flip this over. Image, transform, and let's just do a free transform here. Now, if we can just pull it like that. There we go. And I'll put this just down here to the bottom someplace. Just a nice little soft rose. If I can maybe just off the edge just a touch. And I'll make it a little different shape than the other one. So it doesn't appear to be an exact match. Make it a little bit wider rose this way. There we go. Now notice again we have our roses are overlapping on this because we I pulled the wrong one there. So we have our roses overlapping. Easy enough. Let's just reselect. Yeah. Lost or reselect. No problem. We can just make a new one. So hold the Alt key down. Come to the center point. Again, pull out your selection. Come into the middle of the vignetting in there, the middle of that fading. You see, there, there's as much vignette on this side as there is on that side. We're on this rose up here. Move tool. Delete key cuts that piece off. Let's come down to this layer. Delete key cuts that piece off, and we're all set. Let's just deselect that. So there we go. There is our nice vignette. Now the nice thing again about this is it has some nice little tricky things. Let's hide those guidelines. There we go. Because we use the vignette to cut a little bit off of these roses, you have a nice little softening in there. Now, admittedly, I could have used a layer mask on this rose and a layer mask on that rose. It's done the layer mask trick, except leaving white outside, black inside to hide that bit of rose. Could have gone, you know, one step further, but all I need to do is what I just did just now. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to go the extra step and use a layer mask instead of doing that delete. Personal preference. So there we go. There is our nice little vignette. Now, of course, the the important thing to pay attention here, let me just hide those roses. The important trick was these two layers right here. Making a layer mask, showing the middle, hiding the outside with that 25 pixel vignette. That gives us that basic look. Using a layer mask and unlinking it, so you can click in there, link, click in there, unlink again. That's unlinked. That lets us unlock the layer. There we go. Go over here and we can then move the image around. Notice I can come back now and move the image around some more. I'm not locked into that position, even though I've been doing other stuff. So that allows me that ability to come in and reposition at any time. And then because these layer masks inside of Photoshop Elements aren't exactly perfectly opaque, that's why I made that secondary layer with the white and the hole in the middle. That just gives me that perfectly opaque outline there. It's a trick you sometimes have to do on Photoshop Elements. But there we go. Bring our roses back in again and there is our wedding image vignette. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.